such a bad luck charm for Bondi. Like it's, it's just anything can happen when the black cloud is working. Lifeguard folklore has it that wherever Mouse goes, trouble follows. I just do a lot of serious rescues. Somehow, I always seem to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. I've done, I don't know, maybe six or seven resuses since I've been on the service. Um, seen a few suicides, dealt with a few suicides. Um, last year I did a, a resus on a, on a really young two-year-old girl, which is it's crazy. Um, the very first day I started, just walked down the beach, and as soon as I got down the beach chatting with the lads, a bloke threw himself off the cliff. So I wasn't even working, and I jumped in for that rescue on my very first day. Mouse's reputation has earned him a very special nickname. You go and label Black Cloud. Um, well, kind of started outside of work because things always went wrong with him. And then when he started here as a lifeguard, like it was just really obvious. Matt D, on the other hand, hasn't even rescued a spider all summer. Mouse is at South End while Matt patrols the north. Mouse heads in for what should be a straightforward rescue. But he's nude at one end. Then vomits at the other. Yeah, yeah, I pulled a guy in, his pants fell off and then he spewed on me. That was like a daily double. So uh, hopefully that never, ever happens to me again. Meanwhile, life at North End is far more relaxed. Some little kid just came up and gave me an ice cream. So I'm eating ice cream, chilling out in club bed. Mouse is probably down there. A little kid will come up and bring him a grenade. Mouse to Matty D, come in. Go ahead. What's doing up there, mate? How's it going? Uh, absolutely nothing, mate. Haven't done anything. It's uh, really under control. I actually chatted to a couple of ladies. I'm having an ice cream. <laughs> what are you doing, buddy? Mate, you wouldn't believe it. Ten minutes ago, I had to pull a spider out of somebody's bag. <laughs> All right, it's a joke. I'm over it. And uh, I think we'll do a little swapsies, eh? See how you go down here. I'm coming up north. Chill out. Yeah, copy, Cloud, but uh, yeah, I'll swap, no worries, I'm a team player, but you know, wherever you go, buddy, the black cloud's straight over the top of your head. They test the theory. Mouse heads to the calm waters at North End. Matt D to the rips down south. Is Matt D's luck about to run out? Yeah, I mean, I don't wish um, bad on anyone and that, but I'm looking forward to Matty coughing a real heavy one soon. At the dangerous south end, there's not a rescue in sight. Matt D has no option but to work on PR. Up north, it's meant to be safe. But Mouse has his hands full. Then, cops a foot to the head. I've got a foot in the face, yeah. I think, I'm, yeah. You know, and you chip the top of your tooth. Beauty, yeah. I'll send him the bill. <laughs> the curse of the black cloud continues. Their test only proved it. We swapped. We swapped, I went up north and got absolutely hammered as well. I didn't do anything. I guess you are the cloud, eh? But you did a rescue, I heard you do a rescue on the radio. Nah, I tried to. <laughs> so you didn't rescue him? Nah, uh, well, I tried. I was gonna drag him up the beach. <laughs> you are the black cloud. <laughs> it's official, mate. 10 a.m. Bronte Beach, just south of Bondi. Freelance photographer Fergus Wolverish shoots images of Australian beach life. Suddenly, the serenity is shattered. The reporter I was with um, was called me back and I came running back down. She's like, oh, something's going on, you know, in the water. There was a little blob, like, swimming out. And then, so I turned around and everyone was sort of looking and I said, any strong swimmers, go. I've noticed all the other boys running around like crazy. And so something bad had happened. And I heard the mum screaming, um, Noah, Noah. It was until I grabbed my board and, and I just seen a just a tiny little body uh, just behind the breakers. It turned out to be a little girl. Just as I saw her, she was sh sh trying, still still going for it, up and down, um, head bobbing under the water. But uh, not long after that, she just sort of flattened out and was underwater. And she was just like five or six metres from me underwater. It was you know, heavy. By the time I got to her, she was blue not breathing. The distraught mother is on the shore. Mouse performs CPR on the girl's tiny body. Yeah, I gave her two, two breaths. She just went from being blue and doing nothing to a little 
a little cough and a little like eye flicker and then she started crying and then I Sammy started crying and then we just had a, like a little hug and then started and then we just had to then we had to get her in. Meanwhile, the girl's father is also rescued. He was close to drowning himself. Have a great life. Thank you so much. She awake? She awake? Awake? Yeah, yeah. Keep, make sure she's awake. Keep her awake, okay? Yeah, okay, let's keep walking up to the castle. Come in there, come in there. Come in there. Where's your, where's your husband? Because someone should be probably looking at him because he's taking some water too. The tiny girl's name is Noah Kim. Her family are on holidays from Korea. Father June was underwater when he was rescued. Your daughter should be okay, okay? So, but you need to make sure someone looks at you and listens to your chest. How long was she unconscious? Mate, oh, who knows? You know, maybe three to three minutes. That was insane. I'm paddling out. I can see her body in the water, just her body, and I got hit by a wave, lost my board, and she's like five metres from here. Mate, and, and I then H-Man just threw me his board, and these, I was just yelling at these surfers. And then when, once, and once we turned with, when she came good and she vomited and that, we knew she was okay. I've turned around and this, the other surfers, the local Bronny guys, just had this other guy just holding him up. He was just like out as well. And I was just thinking, what's going on here, you know? It's heavy. Noah will spend two days in intensive care at Sydney Children's Hospital. When we're down here 95% of the time, we're dealing with permanent rips. Permanent rip is a rip that's in the same spot on the beach all the time. Flash rips pop up randomly in all sorts of places and you can't really predict them. You just got to have an eye for catching them before they fully develop. The flags are usually the safest place to swim. But today, lifeguards constantly move the flags to keep swimmers away from flash rips. Sure enough, a flash rip developed in the south corner of the flag. It really pulled out a whole bunch of swimmers. And then I noticed one guy out the back who he was really struggling. It's the furthest guy, the worst, the entire team. As he's dragged out to sea, the man begins to panic. A clear sign he'll soon run out of energy. When people are going under, you don't leave anything in the tank. You just put your head down and paddle as hard as you can. I just didn't think he was going to come back up. There were moments where I had a good eye on him on my target and then moments where I had no idea where he was. The man can no longer keep himself above water. I just didn't think he was going to come back up. It's strange, time just slows down. You're hoping for a clean pickup, but it doesn't always go as planned. I'd lined him up, I was paddling, I had him in my sights and, you know, I was like, I got ya, I got ya, and boom. And I got him. When you complete a serious rescue, there's a, an overwhelming sense of satisfaction that we've completed our job. For the patient, um, there's usually gap gratitude but what follows shortly after that is embarrassment. Not everyone feels like telling the world about their near-death experience. Hey, we, we filmed a documentary about the lifeguards. Oh, yeah. What happened out there? There was no way that bloke was giving an interview to the camera crew. Let's go for the way. But a black cloud still looms over Bondi. Lifeguards suspect it's somehow connected to Mouse. This is such a bad luck charm for Bondi. Like, it's just anything can happen when the black cloud is working. Already in the tower, a head gash, a fin chop, and a man with an injured ankle. This is a disaster, isn't it? Goodness me. But the black cloud looms again, this time over at Flat Rock. Across the mosque, but then this other massive wave came and just pushed us back into the water and just we hit all of the rocks. What do I say, girls? Don't do it. Don't do I'll flat rock. No, oh, I'm not doing it again. Oh, I'm too certain. Then a call from volunteer lifesavers. Hello, Bondo Lifeguards, Michael speaking. Tony, hey mate. Up, eh? 
Sweet. All we can just go about the big place. Right, so the helicopter is on. Oh, mate, I can see the paramedics. Yeah. What's happening? Yeah. Yeah, Chapo, come in. Yeah. Thanks, Tony. I'll give the boys a radio now and work something out. Okay, mate. Bye. Just in the booth, see the paramedics. Yeah, Bondi Central to uh, boys on the beach. I just spoke to Surfcom again. We've actually got an injured person on uh, our Bondi around the booth. I can actually see the paramedics with them now. I don't know if you want to chuck this ski in real quick and have someone shoot over. Let's go. Jetty or paddle? Let's go. Can I have a band aid, please? Yeah, I'm going to give you a band Chapo needs to run yeah. life jackets to the jet ski, but he's still dealing with the victims of Flat Rock. Helicopters just requested that you blokes just stand by and uh, and just keep an eye on them just in case they go on the drink. I think when they've ditched, they ditch to the left. Like, there's little rescues going on and I've, I've not even seen them. Paramedics obviously with them. Bob's going to just go in and see what's doing on the beach. Yak, a paramedic himself, heads in to assist. The man's condition becomes clearer. The local spear fishermen swam into a cloud of blue bottles. I had to do it with the blue bottle that ran his throat. He couldn't breathe. He had severe chest pain. And uh, actually, he's going to winch him up from here. Concerned about there his with deteriorating condition uh, and the paramedic. inaccessible location, and, uh, paramedics uh, chose an airlift. Most toxic bluey ever. I'd like to meet this bluey. Yeah. I'm going to get out of the way now. This bluey has got to go, like, go to the NASA, send it to NASA. They've got to study this bad boy. That was out of control what just happened then, eh? You did it. I, I didn't mean it. You did it, mate. Communication on Bondi Beach is probably the most important thing that we've got. It's pretty simple. The problem is identified. The tower communicates to the beach. There's four or five people out the back there. Oh, be and there's a response. But if a message doesn't get through, people can drown. Midday. And Jethro heads in for a rescue at Backpacker's Rip. Then Harrison identifies more people in trouble further south. On the other south corner, the couple of guys holding onto a board out the back. But Mouse is unresponsive. Mouse, did you copy that? Once I heard him on the radio, I didn't really get a, a, a reply back or a confirmation. Mouse, hello, Mouse. With Jethro in the water and Mouse not responding, I can't see your radio. Harrison turns to Kerbox. Box, can you hear me? Who is at the other end of the beach. Yeah, copy, mate. I'm on my way. With both Jethro and Kerbox in the water and Mouse uncontactable on the radio, no one's available for a new group of swimmers who are getting into trouble. Mouse. Mouse. Hey. Finally, Mouse realises the problem with his radio. Yeah, I'm on it, Harrison. Sorry, mate. Jeffo! The swimmer in trouble at the south end is running out of energy. If communication falls apart on the beach, we've got a loose link in the chain. Serious problems can happen from that. Mate, it's, it's chaos out there. It's actually about five people in trouble. Take the board and I'll do you. You know, you bump your radio or you might be sitting on it. 
or you've got a towel covering it. You know, in this instance, it was just one of those things. While communication's been down, a volunteer lifesaver has saved the day. I guess um, the lesson learned from this whole radio incident is just to always be aware of your line of communication, if, um, especially in those moments where there's a lot going on. If you haven't heard something on the radio, check your volume.